Pom, I've been reluctant to do this video. Um, we're talking about Adam Trelaw. And the reason why I've been reluctant is because when the news first broke that he, you know, might not be at Collingwood, uh, it just seemed so far-fetched that he would come to Carlton. But I can't help but feel <laughs> with every day that passes, there is just an avenue where I think to myself, should we be making a play here? And as soon as I said that to myself, I realized, well, well, then we should probably have a video on this and discuss it with everyone at home. So can we unpack the Adam Trelaw situation here? Well, I mean, I think this comes down to a case, and this is a great lesson for all the viewers as well. We always talk about just front end a deal, just back end a deal, get players through the door. This is the negative of when you back end a deal. Now, Collingwood, by the looks of it and by the reports, have back ended his deal twice. They've postponed the lump sum payment to get him across, and it's created a list management issue. We've got the Goey who was pandering himself around. We've got Darcy Moore, who makes the All Australian total robbery. He gets in there, so he commands more money. And this is the problem you're faced with. Is the player worth it three years down the track? Three years ago, Adam Trelaw was probably close to a million-dollar footballer. Now he's not. Now he's not. And that's the situation you face. Things change in football. Another hamstring injury. 28 years old next year. When they signed him, he was 24. There was a big future. He's a good footballer, but the landscape has changed. And that's where Collingwood are now. Collingwood have got to dot a few eyes in that team selection. They're not quite in the grand final. They keep getting close. Something's got to change. They need players. They need talent. And this is the problem when you back end a deal on potential. And Trelaw now looks like he's been left so they can get rid of some salary cap space. Yeah. And, you know, obviously with trade radio here and sauces on trade radio and, you know, every day there's a little bit of a, a nugget that he drops. He obviously started his SEN career just yapping away as sauce does best. Um, but after that, he's really dropped some, some interesting bits of wisdom for us fans if you pay attention. I mean, he speaks about how um, with Bolton, they were under the salary cap by over a million dollars at times. Um, and they, he spoke about how they really positioned themselves back then to make an assault now, which tells me there's plenty of plenty of uh, room to make a move for a guy like an Adam Trelawney. I think he falls into the category of that, you know, that star mid, the Olivers, the Kellys, the Tarantos, the Trelaws, right? So, I, I, I sort of thought about it. Um, I know that we've committed or, you know, it seems like we've committed to getting Sard and Williams. Um, we've lost Cruiser and Simo. We've lost a few a few salaries there, which you'd think are, you know, close to half a million dollars each, if not more for both of them. I don't know. Um, when you add that plus the salary cap room that we have, now that Sauce has really revealed that to us, it just makes me think we could financially, we could definitely get something done for Adam Trelaw, no? If Collingwood are going to have to pay part of his salary. 100%. I mean, if you believe the reports, they're speculating that this year he's going to be on about 900000 with the back end. And some are reporting over a million. So a lot of reports conflicting, but we can make ballpark assumption about 100000 200000 Collingwood are willing to pay. For me, and we have this discussion off camera... I think there is a place for an A-grade inside midfielder at this football club. But it has to be A grade. And I think Adam Trelaw, if we're having to pay 700k for him and maybe a future first, there's talk that it would be a cut price deal, a bit like the GWS deal that Soros get Plowman and all them players for next to nothing as a salary cap push. Could be something like that for a future first. For me, he poses that issue. He's had a lot of hamstring issues, they keep reoccurring. And he is at that pappy medium now, 28 years old, where hammies start to go as well. Sounds young, but it is an old person's injury. And when they go when you're young, they have a habit of repeating. So it does pose a risk. And that is probably why Brisbane and Gold Coast have been quick to distance themselves. But that being said, he's an elite footballer. There is no getting away from it. People are saying this year he's down, but he wait, rates elite for disposals, inside 50s, inside 50s to score conversions, meters gained, effective disposals. He, he rates elite for these and contested. So he is literally what you're looking for, especially with a 10, 
10 ground ball gets a game, that's almost cripper like So he's a tough footballer as well. He's a tough cookie when he plays. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing about the hamstrings, he's had terrible hamstring injuries. And he's a guy who is a power runner, the way I look at him anyway. He, he's got burst. He kind of is what Dylan Shield is or what we pictured Dylan Shield to be when we were going through the process of getting him in. And um, you think about Cripps feeding the ball out to Trelaw and spreading with Walsh there as well. And it, it, it looks fantastic. I mean, me personally, there's just something about the situation which I'm holding back on. And I don't know if it's just a gut feeling because the reality is he's really, he's what we want. He's what we want. We want an established gun midfielder um, who will take us from being good to, to great potentially, particularly in that at stoppages and, and uh, with the running game and the, the long kicking game that we like to play. Um, but that's just me. I, I'm just a little bit, there's just, there's something that I don't feel with this, which is just my take. But I, I don't want that to, to, you know, be, you know, me telling people what to think. I don't want that to sway anyone's opinion. Um, if anything, I want other people to come out and then discuss it with me. Where are you with this? Do you feel like he's an absolute must if we get the price right? I think on paper it sounds good and I share your reservations. And the one reason I share the reservations is there's the argument about we're a very kick-heavy side. Now, if you look at Collingwood, we're kind of almost, we have a very similar game plan to your Richmonds and Collingwoods. All these sides are starting to look to kick a bit more. And then you look at Trelaw and you look at what around him, these guys have elite kicking numbers. So, Trelaw doesn't have elite kicking numbers, but the people around him do. So it kind of offsets what he does. He's kind of the handball, the cog in the chain to the talent around him. Pendlebury is a wonderful kick. Six score involvements in the game shows he's a very good footballer. That is obscene. That means you're going to get something. But I think if you take him from Collingwood and you put him in Carlton, there isn't that protection he has at Collingwood. There isn't the Taylor Adams. There isn't Scott Pendlebury. There's a young Scott Pendlebury in Sam Walsh. And then there's an Ox in Cripps. But both of these don't have elite kicking numbers to off off offset what he does. And I think it's a different style as well. We kick a lot longer than Collingwood, which suits him in a way, but it would probably be exposed under pressure for me. So I'm not a fan of this. I'm a fan like we talked about off camera of if it's not an elite, like a Clayton Oliver, an elite contested ball winner to help Cripps, plough the time into camp, plough the time into Stocker and use this year to really feed them in. While we've got the protection of Murphy and Ed Kerno, I don't think, for me, Trelaw is a risk because he's probably a hamstring away from losing that pace. And once that pace is gone and that braking speed... I don't think he's Chris Judd, and I don't think he can change his game. I think he is that one-trick breakaway pony. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Uh, but, I, yeah, like I said, I really want to see what everyone else thinks and have a discussion around it. There's pros and cons with everyone, no doubt about that. Um, but I just feel like Adam Trelaw would be a short-term win, but maybe not so much a long-term win. But that's just me and, uh, and obviously your thoughts as well, Pom. But you guys at home, what do you think? Let us know about Adam Trelaw. Should we make a play? Is this the guy that we've been saving our pennies for? A guy like Adam Trelaw. Let us know in the comments below. Hey!